The show continues here at the Heroes Global Championship as we are getting ready for game number four. Fnatic in the lead, two to one. And we hope that you guys are having as much fun as we are because this has been quite the series. This was awesome so far already. We have a 2-1 victory. And what that means already, no matter how this series ends, Fnatic is not going to take the number one spot today. TT. Yeah. Sad base, man. One map win on the side of Team Liquid already guaranteed Team Liquid that even if they lose and end up on the same match score as Fnatic today, they will still be on the number one spot. We are going currently, when we're talking about the rankings, we're looking at the match score first, then we look to the head-to-head. -head, and if Fnatic takes it today, that would be a 1-1, obviously. And our third criteria is the number of 3-0s that the team has been able to achieve throughout the season, how dominant they performed. And currently, Team Liquid is just looking a little bit better there. But of course, Fnatic with a victory here could still make a major step towards a potential rank one ending of the season. And if Fnatic wins, Zing Toss got to start being happy. Suddenly, that top three, that number one spot for the midseason brawl just starts to become a bit of a, a clown fiesta, actually, if you will. So pretty exciting for all that to happen. Let's get ready for our next battleground. Where are we going here? In game number four, it is going to be Sky Temple. And... There's some uh, history here between these two teams. Yeah, so Sky Temple is traditionally a map where Fnatic excels at. This is one of their favorite maps. They love to play this map. They have so many strategies here. They love to play with their globals. But the last time, it was actually Team Liquid who was able to decide the game on this map in their favor. And that was a bit of a blow against Fnatic, and which also had a huge impact on the series itself. So we are entering another map that we have seen in the last best of five between the two of them. Traditionally strong for Fnatic. Of course, Team Liquid also stellar on most of the maps that we have in the lineup right now. But this is now, this is now crucial. This is where Liquid has to make a stand again and say, guys, we don't care. We're going to take you out. I mean, in the last game in Inferno Shrines, the Haka and Falstead show, were shown by Fnatic how strong they can be with the series. So Team Liquid has to be thinking about that, especially with it being Sky Temple. And immediately we had the Falstead ban. There's absolutely no way that Team Liquid says you can have the Globals. This yeah. is just not happening. So right now, we have Team Liquid banning out the false stat, and right after that, Fnatic is looking once again onto the Tacita, saying, hey, they have Nef Nurog with Vala, uh, sorry, they have Darkmog with Vala plays. They have also him as one of the best melee assassins. We do not want that double support. But you can really tell that at this point, they're starting to think a little bit about what would happen if we actually let Tacita go through, because the risk is still that you ban out Tacita, Fnatic picks up globals, and you can't match that. And it's been a while since we've seen Tassadar in play. Perhaps teams have actually gotten much better going in for harder engages, so it's okay to think about maybe we leave it up and we take up the Dahaka. Fnatic decides though, ban out Tassadar. Dahaka will be picked up, so Team Liquid has their split push capabilities. Yeah, so at this point, you have to think about other options. Do we go for an ETC with a stage dive? Do we play maybe that Hunt Illidan again that was so successful for us on uh, Wire Junction? A little bit less likely on a map like Sky Temple. And then at the same time, we've even seen a Brightwing earlier. Granted, the map was bigger, but it's still one of those global, pseudo-globals that you can sometimes have in the game. Fnatic, of course, has also very different ways of how to approach such a game now. But let's see if they maybe have something completely different. Well, traditionally, they've grabbed their Grey main early here. This is usually the spot where you're going to get it, and they should be able to pick a support that they would like. Possibilities, Grey main Malfurion, but Grey main Lucio, also a great option for them. Also, something that doesn't really get picked up for Fnatic and Team Liquid so much, the Arth is still floating yeah. around. Arthas is still around. There's so many ways how they could open into the game now. Yeah. And this is going to decide a lot. And you can really tell how much time they spend with this. Lucio Greymane. All right. So they cater to their strengths again. First of all, having the Lucio here, rocking the Greymane. Last time we actually saw them pick up the Lucio, one of the heroes that Team Liquid wanted to get rid of a bit later on was Tykes because of that extra push against the tank front line with the bigger they are. But we don't really know what their front line is going to look like. We only know about the Dahakas thus far. And let's find out what Team Liquid is going to take. Typically, whenever we have Dehaka, the pickup for Team Liquid is usually either the Grey Main, or not the Grey Main, the uh, Nubrak, or the Varian. It's usually the tank that they move in for. I wouldn't mind seeing an Arthas in this battleground in particular. He controls the spot really well, especially when you're going through the Shrine phases. Uh, and then from there, grab one of their healers here. Malfurion is just wonderful for stopping those dives. The roots, so powerful, and also great against Lucio. If you ever land a root on one of those targets, most of the time, your team can engage and get a kill. And so many Malfurion players have decided team fights in favor of their team with a good heroic ability, getting a good Twilight Dream. So we have again Malfurion in here. And of course, our boy, it's Gul'dan, Mr. Horrify himself. Mr. Horrify himself. Been horrifying this entire series so far. So Malfurion, Gul'dan, and Dahaka, the lineup for Team Liquid looking pretty darn terrifying. Yeah. 
It's looking a very, very strong. Fnatic now has to try and meet this. And yeah, Gul'dan having massive, massive impacts on all the games in HTC Euro for a long time. And a pretty sick win rate on him as well. And now we're thinking about bans here. Uh, if you're thinking about a second tank, would probably be an option for Fnatic to ban out. I personally would ban out the uh, variant here to stop the engages from being too effective. However, it is gold in. If you go too heavy on tanks, it could be a little bit hard for Team Liquid to get kills. So there is always the other possibility of banning out this guy, Medivh, the hard engager that Fnatic's been pulling out. It's just these Hazops respect bans that we see come out yeah. so much. It feels a bit when you go up against, uh, against Team Liquid, you ban out the Lost Vikings, you ban out the Medivh, you try and counter ban Hazops a bit. And there's these odd picks that most people don't want to deal with. You see that with other teams too. Uh, imagine ADRD oftentimes being in the same boat where his Medivh gets just banned out because teams don't want to deal with it. The Leyline seal setup is just so absolutely fantastic. And then you have the portals that allow so much utility in all of these situations that Fnatic just simply says, no, we don't want to deal with that again. We had the pleasure already on previous maps and uh, don't have to experience that once more. The disruption was a pain for Fnatic, especially when you have Lucio. Lucio is so important it to hit those sound barriers at the most optimal moment or you're just going to fail out in the team fight. So you don't want to deal with that Leyland Seal coming your way. So it just makes sense to ban out. Now looking over to Team Liquid, what are you thinking about in terms of bans? For Team Liquid, I think a frontline ban would actually make sense. We have you have been talking about Arthurs quite a bit. We have also, of course, the other heroes that they play a lot. But no, it's Li Ming here trying to make sure that Greyman can't provide these resets with the Li Ming capitalizing on it in the back line. I really expected them to focus the front line a bit more with uh, the ban here, but instead they are making sure that Shrimpy can't jump on Li Ming, since of course around those temples she can poke a lot. Yeah, she really can. And on Sky Temple, also when the couple of forts break open, there's so much space all the way back to your base to where Li Ming just becomes a major threat to get that poke in. In fact, we had a really major play, I believe, in week four, where we saw Shrimpy actually play the Li Ming and just go off on that character. And with the Grey Main being here, the resets are just too scary. So Li Ming has been manned out, but now Fnatic has the choice to grab whatever warrior they want. Yeah, they like to play also with the Tyrell in this map, but Tyrell since then has fallen off a bit. Oftentimes Tyrell was really good to just get those controls on the temples and also then later on when you're fighting more over bosses and you can make big plays with that. False at this time is not a tool because oftentimes you also use the Mighty Gust in that sense. Uh, Team Liquid has shut down that potential play really early on. And Fnatic with the Anubar and still the Tyrell. They still go for it. Okay, so they say he still has enough value for us on this map and that should put Wubi on the Tyria and Breeze on the Anubara. Yeah, so we're going to have aggressive play from Fnatic. That's what this illustrates here. They have the Tyrael, the Anubrak, they can dive in with Sanctification. They have really good boss control too with that Sync, so they can actually handle any fights that Team Liquid has around that boss area. Team Liquid has to find tools here to prevent that dive from being effective. And this is also an interesting last pick now because we have two... Oh, there's the variant and the Abatha. But we have two players that can play the Grey Main. It's not only Quacknick, Shrimpy can play the hero too. And that opens up a few possibilities when we're talking about the potential last pick here. I am really curious what this is going to be for them now. Well, it has to be a little bit more damage here. Potential mage pickup could be good for them. I mean, for a second, I'm really thinking about even a Zeratul in the setup against the Abatha now on the map as well. I was thinking about a Valera. I mean, Shrimpy has played it. We don't, haven't really seen it too much since then. Yeah. But stuff like that would be scary. Putting the pressure on the Gul'dan. Malfury, on the other hand, has the Scouting Jones. That helps him a little bit with the positioning. True. But Abatha would have a rougher time on the map. Range damage is another option for them. There's but yeah, they, they're really flexible with Greyman uh, being playable by both Quarknix and Shrimpy. Yeah. Well, we'll find out here in a second. What will be the pickup here for Fnatic? It's going to be Sylvanas. All right, all right. So Sylvanas being chosen for now. They can put heavy pressure onto these lanes. Wave clear mainly on the side of Gul'dan. Now, Abathur oftentimes has that weaker early game. So uh, Fnatic may be thinking, all right, we're, we're going to try and push the lanes in quite hard, get the tower at the early game. Try to maybe pressure the bot lane a little bit, aim for the fountain so that we have a better, better and an easier second temple phase. Yeah. You can make quite a bit happen uh, with early game pressure through Sylvanas if your opponent is running the Abathur there. It's twofold. You get the pressure from the early game in Sylvanas, but you also get the Willing Arrow if you want to interrupt 
great horrifies from the gold dan if you can make sure to land that willing arrow go for a dive you can get Grayman to go in there and be effective yeah definitely also when avatar of course loses the copy then you can go in the silence alone can really make a big difference when the team fight starts and uh, variant charges in goes for the taunt Gul'dan, of course is the one who has to try and follow that up if you get a quick silence in, and then you can uh, engage save the target of the taunt and then uh, turn the battle around Sylvanas can work with this, yeah. It all comes down to, I feel like, Blumby here and to Hawkeye, making sure that they control the dive that's going to be coming their way, because it's very obvious here, Fnatic is looking to win these team fights and win them quickly. Let's go into Sky Temple here. Game at number four. Fnatic has a chance to end Team Liquid's undefeated streak, or Team Liquid could walk away and get a tie here. Team Liquid is indeed undefeated thus far, but in this series, they are behind. Fnatic starting to the left side with Wubi on Tyrael, Breeze on Anubra, Quatnix on Greymane, Smexy on Lucio, and Sylvanas is played by Shrimpy. To the right, in the red, Team Liquid. Splendor will be on the Malfurion. We're going to have Gul'dan played by Nurok. Varian played by Flumby. We're going to have Hasuobs on the Abathur. And last but not least, we're going to be having our Nurok here on Gul'dan. And talking about Abathur, this is, of course, also another thing that is putting a lot of pressure onto, especially that backline. If Dehaka burrows in with an Abathur head, especially at the early stages of the game, then if you are one of these squishies, you need to be just so careful since that can just end you. Big engagement here on the top as we're going to go for the Savannah. She's a drag does connect, though, as Darkmark is able to hit Schwimpy. <laughs> That's exactly what we just talked about, that Dehaka with the Abathur head. But this is really one of those things where you attempt to just get a lead in the early game because you can exploit the weaker early game of Abathur with Sylvanas. So they move in. Solid defense so far from Team Liquid. Now it's all about spreading out. We're going to have a three-man rotation in the top here, which we'll have Dahaka and Abathur holding, and they can do pretty well as uh, Darkmark can focus on just clearing out the waves while Abathur helps out his teammates across the battleground. But yes, that one through nine will be something that Fnatic is attempting to exploit. I'm watching Sylvanas here, and she's moving between the top and the middle, but so far Team Liquid is keeping her in check. Yeah, they're doing really well with this and forcing Shrimpy to even wave back into the base. So they are definitely keeping Sylvanas in check, and they're also trying to do that by controlling the vision at this point. Vision control that makes it harder for Sylvanas to rotate between the top and the middle. She may just select him to the bottom lane here and help out the Grayman. Grayman getting actually decent value so far. Abathur will be forced to focus down that wave there and soak it up. And now with Nuro coming back down, that opens, of course, another opportunity for Sylvanas to make in plays elsewhere. And all the pressure at the bot lane is something that Fnatic wants to do because they are trying to get that well down. And if they get a lead at that bot lane, they can later on have an easier second temple phase, which is what it's all about. Usually with the first one that we're seeing here, you're talking about a trade between the two temples. But then the second one, this is where a lot of the strategy comes into play. Yep, you're setting yourself up to have a successful second phase there. You want to burn down four to off Wells mentioned in the draft by Kaldor here. Blumby is doing a solid job of harassing here in the middle, which is really cool. Our tanks are pretty durable. They can hold the top lane. They can also hold the middle lane. So you have the Abathur hat coming in and poking whoever Fnatic isn't putting enough resources for defense. And so far, it's been the top lane here. As Tyrael goes in, deals with Dehaka a little bit, but overall, with the Abathur hat, Dehaka is reigning supreme. And you are completely right. They're really playing around that symbiote. So they're always forcing reactions out of Abathur in particular, who went for a support build, by the way, with the shields here with the Carapace. But we also now see again pressure at the bot lane thanks to Greyman, who's now moving in to the middle here. Quartnix with the pressure against Dartmok. Dartmok trying to move out, dodging the stun though. Well done here. The drag comes in and Breeze is about to fall. Barely escapes. Moonfire hits him, but he hits his W in his shield just before he gets taken down. Incredibly close. And Team Liquid will take the opportunity of almost killing Breeze, which effectively they did. They got him to walk away from the fight, which allows for them to take the temple here. They get a few more shots, and overall, Team Liquid taking this disadvantage of having Abathur and making it work. They're making it work, but they still lost structures at the bot lane, and that could become an issue. Now, of course, now that the temples are done with, we are talking about the siege camps in particular, and they are already being taken here. So, siege camp number one on the side of Team Liquid has just now been grabbed, whereas Fnatic was looking towards their own night camp to the top and is executing some pressure play with that. Sylvanas still staying at that bot lane for now, though, and it looks like they are themselves now trying to take the siege giants. Blumby did scatter it out. 
So he does know that a few members are heading to bottom, which allows Dahaka to get aggressive in that top lane, and he is doing so. He's clearing out those mercenary camps so they won't get too much advantage. They also stop Fnatic from grabbing their giants. So Team Liquid, in terms of map control, are doing a splendid job here of shutting down Sylvanas and grabbing mercs. The Team Liquid is uh, doing an absolutely incredible job. It's really impressive to see how they are playing around the weakness of Abatha. But now we have Splendor being really low, but Quarknix is not able to get that kill. Hazops pays attention and immediately helps Splendor out. Big symbiote coming in. Dehaka continuing to own that top lane while Avatar is soaking with his body in the middle lane there. Finally, they clear out those mercenary camps here. Dark Moth doing a great job overall playing the Dehaka role. Fnatic, though, moving in on Splendor, realized that he had to rotate out to tap a well, get all healed up and such. It's going to go ahead and push on this bottom. They grab one turret, which they open this wall up slightly. can do a few more pokes. Yeah, still no camp grab, by the way, down to the bot lane. That was still interrupted by Team Liquid. And TL is doing fantastic when it comes to the map control now. They are actually starting to not only take a lead in experience, but they also have a bit of a structural advantage going for themselves. And they have a threat with Darkmok owning that top lane. The mercenary camps being grabbed early by Fnatic. Darkmok can just hang out here the entire time during the second temple phase, while Team Liquid goes in for aggressive play and steal away the giants from Fnatic. And by now, Team Liquid also picked on Abatha the network carapace, so that's going to help them even push on lanes a little bit more. And right now, top lane is already heavily under pressure with the Haka set up. He is going to move to the bot lane if need be for that. But we see this is one that Fnatic has to win. Because so far, we don't have a Kaupi on Abatha, and this is really a temple that they want to win. But now they have to retreat with Breeze again, since we have instead Quartnix moving into the middle. So Fnatic decides to give it up and just split see what they can do in that mid lane, grab some experience, and maybe work towards the early level 10. And it looks like Breeze is actually hoping to surprise Abathur here, and Hazops immediately move back towards the top. Yep, he rotates out, and Dark Monk is slowed down, so Savannah gets the time to put a little bit of damage on the fort, but nothing substantial, while Blumbeast in the bottom, and they are really starting to take a lead here. Team Liquid is just moving so well right now. They're moving like water here as they continue to adapt to Fnatic. They'll go ahead and get some pressure here on the top wall, but the fort does fall for Team Liquid it's on the left side. absolutely impressive how Team Liquid is playing this right now. Yeah. They are having perfect rotations on the map. They always meet the pressure, and they themselves are starting to get farther farther ahead, especially when it comes to the structures. Even with all the pressure, that Syl Sylvanas is one of those picks that really puts you to the test and how you play when you're having an Abathur in your mids before level 10 hits, and Team Liquid has done this absolutely perfectly. They have made no mistakes, they nearly got a kill against Breeze on top of all of that, which would have things and made matters even worse for Fnatic, but TL, kudos. And now we hit 10, and Team Liquid is very happy with where they're at right now. Abathur in the bottom, Tyrael is trying to just help out with the push. They have Mercenary push in the top left corner. We're going to have Dahaka floating around here, and Nurok was sitting behind the vision there to hit a Horrify. Sadly, it doesn't quite connect the way he wants it to, but the wheels are turning here for Team Liquid. They try to get kill on Greymane. Yeah. The one thing that we still have to point out is that, of course, with, Felini uh, sorry, with Team Liquid doing well in this early game, it still doesn't mean that Fnatic is now going to lose out. It's just a phase during the game in which Fnatic should, be, should have been able to get a little bit ahead. But this is not necessarily what a potential victory for Fnatic hinges on. They have a lot of tools available with a Curse Bullet, a potential blow up here. Wubi not making a choice, or sorry, Breeze not making a choice on a Nubarak's level 10 yet. But Wubi alone with the Sanctification material allows them to make so many plays with Greymane later on that this is still anybody's game to take. But Team Liquid has definitely dodged a bit of a bullet in that early game that could have potentially led to Fnatic having a lead heading into this mid game. That it could have, and I'm curious about the Fnatic pick here on that Anubrak. Historically, it started to be the Cocoon constantly here. If you can hit a Malfurion before he moves in with a Twilight Dream, you can interrupt it, slow him down on that engage, and that allows Greymane to move in with the Sylvanas Welling Arrow if they're able to hit Goldam with the Horrify. So there is some layered aggression available for Fnatic. Now we have two temples activating, one in the middle and one in the bottom. Team Liquid puts their eyes in the middle one. Yeah, macro game, of course, is now going to be important again. Uh who goes for which here? Wubi wants to move back. Doesn't really want to hard engage just yet. I wouldn't be shocked to see Cocoon being used by Fnatic. When they move in with a Curse Bullet and with Greymane dropping the Sanctification on the ground, getting the Cocoon just either to isolate... You can I There's so many targets for Cocoon as well. You can Cocoon the Gul'dan, you can Cocoon Malfurion, or you simply Cocoon uh, um, Varian, depending on the situation. So that works really well for them. They are putting the pressure onto the bot lane for now, but 
Team Liquid still has a bit of a lead. Not only experience, it's really the structural position that they're in that is really strong for them. Well, Blumby moves in to get some stuff going down there. Does hit Breeze and he burrows away. Just trying to get them to move away from the temple so they can grab a few shots. While Dark Mock is employing the same strategy we saw in the early game. Put the tanks on both temples and work around that symbiote. <laughs> yeah, that's a five man right there. Yeah, good night. That is not going to be ending up well for. Oh, is it? There's the fear, the horrify. They actually saved Darkmog. Impressive. And there's the taunt against Breeze. That sound barrier and sanctification coming down. Wow, not only did Fnatic not get the kill, they dropped every single cooldown they had on this. That they did. The double gold dan coming out from Team Liquid to poke down the opponents, chasing them away. It almost felt like they had to drop those heroics just to survive there from the damage output coming up from Team Liquid. And now Team Liquid, seeing all those heroics down, can rotate and grab the temple. You say they almost had the kill. I was already ordering the casket. This <laughs> is... That was impressive by Liquid. Cool Dan moving in with a horrify just in the last moment, and then everybody else being on the same page, making sure that he got away. And Fnatic just barely saving Breeze. Fnatic frantically looking for some kind of advantage with the Sylvanas. They're on the top of pushing it in here, but Darkmonk's already here to answer the call. We'll start to clear out a few of these minions, and the pressure from Nurok on Schwimpy will make it hard for him to turn off the sport. Yeah, so now the top lane pressure. Actually, Tyrael moved down to the bottom to grab the last few shots here. So at least they get a bit of pressure in. But Fnatic is losing every single fort on the map. They only have one remaining, and that is down to just a few hit points. Uh-oh, root lockdown. Okay, so it gets away. But they are finally four taken out by Fnatic as well. But Darkmog is now, with the help of the temple, eliminating the last remaining fort at the top. And from a structural point of view, Fnatic is incredibly far behind. It's a game of chess between the two teams here with the rotations. The Horrify comes out to hit Smexi. He's going to be backing off to the left side here while Darkmog and uh, Bacterial continue to dance back and forth. Wubby eventually gives it up here with all members rotating in from Team Liquid. Now, Ultimate Evolution is up. This is a fight you want to take for Fnatic. Now that Horrify has been used, this is a fight that you are happy to take if you can get the engage. You have all your ults up, you know that Horrify is out. It's one of the, the biggest tools in the arsenal of Team Liquid. If they just can set them up properly, they would love to take this. Fnatic was trying to bait Team Liquid into that choke there so they could get the massive Wailing Arrow to the Grey Man Cleave and get some kills there. Team Liquid does not bite though, and will be forced to back up and head back to the middle here and defend safely. They're taking the safe routes as they should because Fnatic is looking for an opportunity. They would love to grab their engage and finally get some momentum on this battleground. And do remember, we've been talking about it, the moment that a fort falls or that a couple of teammates fall for Team Liquid, Sylvanas gets aggressive and that's a keep. Yeah, the problem for Fnatic is also the level 16 talent for Team Liquid. They are in deep trouble if there's a new objective spawning when there's a talent advantage for Liquid. Since the structures are going to be attacked directly by the objective, and this is really when you're having a lot of trouble. They can uh, later on make good plays for the boss because they have Sanctification as one of the biggest advantage, but of course they need to also consider that Horrify is now off cooldown again. There's the Taunt once more. Blumby, with the help of Abatha, always moving into this. But Team Liquid is really running the show here. They are really dominating this game so far. We haven't seen a single kill yet, by the way. This is all just rotations, 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 and strategy. And Team Liquid with a level 16 talent immediately turn onto the boss. Yeah, they're not intending to slow down here. Now, they do have to be careful, because even though Fnatic is behind a talent, Sanctification is a massive tool here for taking away this boss. Grey means rotating in, so on the left side here. We're gonna watch this Team Liquid hopes to hold him here. I'm gonna watch Blumby. He's gotta hit a perfect taunt here on Wubby to make sure that he doesn't get the sanctification off. Wubby doesn't even dive in for it. That is gonna be the boss. Penetti is starting to die a slow and painful death here. Boss is taken, the objective is up, there's two temples spawning, and Fnatic doesn't have a level 16. The boss is gonna move through the bot lane over here. Yeah, there's the attempt to lock down Wubby. There is the Horrify, and it looks like Tyrael might be yeah, is, uh, what? He survives there. <laughs> Sadly. Still no kill in this game. Zero to zero in deaths. But overall play, Team Liquid is definitely outplaying Fnatic. There is a temple at the very top and the middle for them to grab, and they are getting keep damage. That was a Twilight Dream and a Horrify being dropped on Ethereal that survived. In this game, nobody is dying. It's like five, ten immortals facing off against each other. They're just not falling. But yeah. now it's 16 versus 16. And Fnatic, they are really, really forced to make something happen on the 16 talent here. They're moving in. 
They're on the side here. This is their moment to fight. It's also a fantastic talent of tier for them to have, by the way. Sylvanas with the cold embrace, and then of course Greymane having the executioner here. The extra damage that he can run. Yeah, zoning out Darkmok to the top. The rest of the team starting to rotate in, but of course that's true for both of them. And there's the taunt again against Whoopi, and he still is 30 seconds away of having Sanked up again. Unfortunate. Breeze goes in for the dive. He misses out on Nurok. Nurok sidesteps there. The Wailing Arrow comes out, and Fnatic losing a lot of their team fight potential. Team Liquid turns around to go for a fight. Hasuab's poking away on the ultimate evolution, Golden. Yeah, also up to the top, Yahaka has taken his position on the Shrine again. So he hasn't used his global yet either, so he can join this battle whenever he pleases to. Hazorps at that bottom no lane, putting an additional pressure on. They're moving in again. They go for Tyria, locked down, and that is a kill. Could be dodged. Yep, there it is. Burrow being used. Ice block as well on the side of Splendor. Team Liquid with fantastic performance so far. Team Liquid, the first kill of the game here at 14 minutes and 30 seconds. Blummy looking for more, goes in for a dive, but Breezes get out, and the Temple still activated at the very top. is for the taking here for Team Liquid, as Abler just keeps sitting back home, and he keeps an eye on his tanks. With the way that this entire game unfolds, I would have loved Cocoon over the uh, Locust Swarm, but I can totally see why he goes for it. It's such so difficult to keep yourself alive against all of these disablers with the taunt moving in, and it's really tricky. So, Cocoon might have been the better tool there in hindsight, but it's a very difficult choice to make, especially if your Tyrael alone is already under so much pressure here. They are just really struggling against all these disables that come in. You have the Taunt against you, the Horrify, the Twilight Dream, the Dragon, the Haka. There's just so many tools in Team Liquid's, uh, to, uh, Team Liquid's disposal that they can use to break up Fnatic's rhythm. And Fnatic hasn't been able to take a single team fight where they, where they feel confident that they can go all the way. Well, Fnatic's still not out, though. Still have their keeps. One all to the top is weak there, as Zahaka will pressure it with the aid of Abathur and start getting the uh, pressure to move in. And Fnatic has made a choice. They're going to get aggressive. They're moving towards the bottom right. They're going to use Sylvanas here to turn off the turrets, and they're looking for a kill. If they can get one or two, it'd be great before Team Liquid hits 20. Yeah, they are starting to pressure through heavily, and they want—they knew they, they, they definitely know they need to make something happen. The problem is the Haka at the top lane is going to get the keep. So the keep at the top lane is falling, and the Haka is going to move back in. But with that camp at the bottom, they are trying to at least get a counter kill against one of the keeps. There's the copy on Gul'dan, double Gul'dan moving in. The Haka, of course, is joining the fight now. Here comes the silence. Horrify is not is used already as well. Dark Mork is really deep. Sank is through all already, and we still have Team Liquid fighting for their keep and pushing Fnatic back. Yeah, Nurok low on health here. Keeps getting chunked there by the Cocktails. Blumby on the back left, the Holy Ground coming in. Splinter does use the Twilight Dream, and Nubrak falls there, so Breeze no longer available for Fnatic. Darkmonk chasing in, tries to squeeze on by the Holy Ground. Splinter even bolting over. He hits the root, though, on Greymane. It's the root on Greymane, but we have to move back. But Darkmonk is moving in from behind. They try to go for Nurong and take him down, but Quarknix ends up falling, and Smexy is about to die too. If uh, can, he, can he actually get out of He's this? He's glided. He actually slid past Abathar. No eyes of this come here, my friend. <laughs> Even um, Abathar trying to throw down mines to slow him down. I'm gonna slap you around a little bit. So Smexy trying to rush away, but Nurok might catch him, and indeed he does. This is the end of Lucio. There it is, Lucio <laughs> falls. Even he had up too. <laughs> oh, that would have been too good. Just think about this for a moment. If Fnatic fails to kill a single hero and it's the mercenaries that take out Abathur. <laughs> Feels bad, man. <laughs> that would have been so poor if that actually happened. Okay, 20 to 18, two members down. Darkbox grabbing the temple at the top. The boss spawning relatively soon here. Uh, Team Liquid has a few tools to go win the video game and yeah. they start moving in. They should go for boss now. There's two heroes still down. Sanct is on cooldown. They don't know that, but they... They should. They have Horrify available, so they can make that play for boss if they want to, but two keeps are already down, a third one being attacked. So Liquid can make the play for the boss, but they have to be very aware that this is also a potential for them to fall. Wubby well, gets chunked out, down to a quarter health, and is this the point where you make the call here? Grammy's in the top, with Tyrion low on health. Still, Blumby and crew are trying to bait this boss I here. I would not necessarily go for it. You know Fnatic is going to contest it. They have to. They cannot simply let this slide. And this is the one moment where you can throw the game. If you go in and Tyrell steals it away with a Sank, there's a chance that you're going to lose it. Now. Yeah. So uh, 
you can play the game slow. You don't have to rush into this. Yes, you can make that call. You have the level 20 talent advantage, but you don't have to. Fnatic is the one who's starting it because they're saying this is the only way how we can come back into this game. We need to force a fight. If we, if we wait this out and let them play it slow, we lose. So this is the only chance we have, even if it's a small one. Well, Team Liquid goes through for the engage. The Wailing Arrow does come out. Dahaka getting low on health, but barely survives thanks to adaptation. Unbelievable. They didn't lose a single hero this game. Lumbi charges in. There's still a chance for them to lose a hero. But with the catapults moving towards the core, Fnatic has to back up, especially with Tyrael being gone, which is their ace in the hole to grab that boss. Yeah, Tyrael is down, and this is the moment Liquid can go for it. There's no way for Fnatic to steal this one away. At least I don't know how they would do it. They're going for Breeze. Sound Barrier is out. The fight has started. Five versus four. Fnatic down a hero. Have to retreat again. Sound Barrier not active anymore. A lot of poke happening from Quacknix in particular. But Team Liquid still dancing around the boss as the top lane is under pressure since we see Catapults moving in against the core of Fnatic. They're also about to lose a third keep. It gets picked off from the Giants that were grabbed earlier by Team Liquid. So all three keeps are down here. Team Liquid grabbing infrastructure advantage and a pick. And you could see the shields on the minions. This is thanks to level 7 talent on Avatar. Network Carapace that has such a huge impact on this. It really does here. Fnatic about hit 20, but it's a little bit too late here. We're going to have Team Liquid keep baiting in. They're looking to get Lucio or maybe even a Greyman here on the left. They're moving in on Greyman, actually. Darkmox on the left. Splinter does have Bolt available. He goes in for the root. There's the grab. That's Quagnix. And that should secure the game here. It looks like Team Liquid just has too much control. There was no way for him to survive. Horrify was also available for Gul'dan. That would have been a kill either way. And with all of the structures down, it means one single temple is all you need. So, Shwimpy, the Lone Rider. Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> he gets it. He grabs the keep there. Dahaka already on the core as it begins to fall. Shwimpy B steps. He knows this is over. There's two temples. You only need one to complete it. Team Liquid takes the win on Sky Temple and ties the series again. We have the fifth map that we were hoping for. We said it at the very beginning, we want to go all the way to game number five, and Team Liquid and Fnatic delivers, but the control on game number four was just merely impressive by Team Liquid. Absolutely well done. They held on from one to nine there. Didn't lose a single hero yeah. either. Just spectacular play all around. I can't believe that they were able to keep all of these guys alive. Sometimes it all sort of felt that they were dead already. Yeah. I loved also Shrimpy. With a bit of good humor there at the end, you have to also understand that all of these teams are, of course, good friends. So they scrim a lot with each other. They banter all day long, every single scrim there is in uh, broadcast in the game as well. And then at some point, Shrimpy was okay. We might not win the game, but I am getting this keep. He went in for it. He did grab it, <laughs> he so it. he gets points, man. Let's go ahead and gear